Hello, and welcome back to week three of this scene coloring breakdown series here on the Sweet November Stamps YouTube channel. I'm Amy, and I am the co-owner and illustrator for Sweet November Stamps, and we are working on our pink Halloween Halloween card featuring this delightful little witch and her cat and the bats from the You Look Familiar uh, clear stamp set. And they are paired with the brand new, just released, uh, Autumn Cottages background builder set. And we have spent the last couple of sessions getting that beautiful sky up there and our lovely little cottage for our witch all colored up. And today we are going to tackle the distant background. That's basically everything from behind this brick wall back. And so let's jump right into that. Now, if you watched the previous breakdown uh, uh, series, one of the, not the one that just ended, uh, before we started this one, but the one before with the princess, it's going to be kind of similar in that I'm going to be using some purples uh, to color in those distant hills instead of greens, but we will transition into greens as we get closer. So it's something we've covered um, before. We'll be using slightly different markers, um, but same basic principle. And it's going to um, play very well with our whole pastel pink kind of color story that we've got going on here. And to that end, let's see, I'm going to come in with V20. And we, do, you know, created our horizon line in the very first video with the RV000. So I'm just going to take my V20 and go right up to that where the RV triple starts and I'm going to start filling in that distant background with a base coat of this V20. And I'm coloring on Catherine Pooler white cardstock and it is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. A2 card size that I, most of my card making, 99% of the cards I make are this size of card. All right. We're even going to be using it here, even though I'm not going to bring it all the way down. We'll let it kind of stop fading there. All right, so I'm just thinking in terms of maybe before I finish filling that in, I've got, you know, we've got little stone steps coming down from our cottage that are going to lead into a little path. So I want to get that path kind of sketched in before I continue to fill in anything. So I'm going to come in with an E31. And I'm just going to imagine that little trail and coming out this way towards our little witch and her cat. And because we've got this hillside here, maybe as the hillside kind of straightens out, you know, it'll be back behind the witch so we won't see it necessarily, but maybe our path makes a little turn to the open gate and so we're going to pick it up so i imagine it kind of curving around and picking back up around here and then as it nears the gate the path gets wider and that's creating that perspective and the further back it goes the more narrow it gets 
So we're going to just fill in this with dirt. And we'll add more detail to it here in a bit. But right now, all I'm doing is giving myself a nice visual of, you know, where everything kind of lands within this scene. And I want to straighten out the bottom of that hill just a little bit. So I'm going to bring my dirt up like so. Okay, there we go. Now I can kind of continue on with that V20 that I was using to map out all the grassy land in our background here. All right, there we go. Awesome. All right, so V20 to V22. These are the colors, you know, I used V22 last week in our trees. And it's mostly because I really like the amount of gray um, and how desaturated these V20 color family uh, of Copics are. And I'm going to start creating kind of the distinction between individual little hillsides back here in the distance. It's kind of amazing how, you know, just getting those sweeps of color in really start um, give it, creating that illusion of a landscape kind of rolling along back there. Um, from V22, I'm going to bring in, let's see, what do I want? What about V25? little bush kind of throwing in the house casting a shadow out this way since our light source we've established is coming in from the left hand side of the card I think that's about as dark as I want to take those, especially the ones further off in the distance. So I'm going to work my way back to that V22. We'll just pull out the 25 as we get to the tops of our hillsides, keeping them nice and light.
see. I'm kind of thinking I actually might, instead of going back over it with the V20 uh, that I started with, I'm going to come in with an RV91. So it's a uh, red violet, a pink, but it's again got a similar amount of gray tone to it as those V's that I've been using, those V20s. Um, but I'm going to use it to the tops of my hills. It's going to bring a little bit more of that pink in. Uh, so that it looks like, you know, that the hills are kind of catching again, that kind of pink in our sunset sky. And they're kind of reflecting that back. Plus, it just gets a little bit more of our, our pinkoween theme in there. So, but it's very subtle. And it looks a little dark, a little gray right now. Um, but as that dries, it will brighten up um, again. And that's something you always want to keep in mind when you're working with your Copic markers. Um, if you something's looking a little darker than you would like or, or a little bit muddy or whatever, and you're trying, you think you might need to fix it, give yourself a little bit of time. Wait, let it dry, and you'll get a truer sense of where that color is landing and a better sense of whether or not you need to adjust and go a different direction to create the whatever vision it is that you have um, for your color combo. Um, but if you keep working, keep working while it's still wet, um, you're going to, you're not helping yourself at all um, because you're not working or trying to fix whatever that what it truly looks like once it's dry so you know give yourself a little bit of time let it do its thing let that you know the the alcohol the carrier evaporate out of the cardstock and you'll be left with a, a truer sense of whatever the pigment that's left behind all right so now I want to start pulling in some greens for our grass that's a little bit closer. And I'm going to be using, I'll start with a, a YG11. Because again, I'm, I'm trying to keep with that kind of pastel look for Pinkoween. So I don't want to go anything too dark or too bright. but I do want it to not be so gray. I want it to be a little playful. And it'll really continue as we get down here in front, but this is just our first little glimpses of our, our green in our, our hillside back here. Now, from there, I think I'm going to come with a little bit of, hmm, <laughs> maybe G43. And we're just going to let those greens melt right into our purples.
and this always takes a little bit of back and forth, back and forth between, especially, you know, we're using two colors that, um, even though, you know, they're both cooler colors and they land kind of on the same side of the color wheel, they're not, um, you know, like right next to each other. So it's not, you got to give, it takes a little bit of work. Uh, it's not as, as, as easy of a, a blend out as if you were doing like blue green into blue or something like that. All right. So bringing back in that V20. And it goes right into those greens. So that's what I mean by that back and forth. You can't be afraid to take these, um, color, you know, markers from various color families and layer them right over top of each other. That's kind of the beauty of our alcohol markers, our Copic markers, is that, you know, any layer that you lay down first of color is going to influence and affect the other colors that you lay over top of it. And that's how you can create these really lovely gradients um, between these disparate color families. And just, you know, using that side of that marker, that very soft sweeping motion, I use um, less of a flick of the wrist and I'm more, um, it's my elbow that is doing, you know, dictating the movement, uh, the sweep of my brush stroke. And that's what gives me those nice, long, consistent, and just soft applications of color, barely kissing that cardstock. I'll use it back here on our distant hills, too, where I just feel like I need a little bit more blending out. There we go. But then we're starting to get really lovely, really lovely. Look at that. And I'm going to let it dry so I really get a picture of, but look at that smooth blend, you know, between where our grass is starting because it's getting closer to us um, and, and we're seeing more of its true color than the stuff that's in the distance that's being affected by the lack of light in the sky, um, you know, so uh, just, you know, could not be happier with how that's coming together. Dropped a gray marker. That's okay. I'm just looking for, uh, oh, like a four. So I've got an N4 here. And we'll just add little hits of color to our little stone steps. Um, And that's those are the sides of the steps. And then I'm going to come in with a two for the tops so that they are lighter because they're getting the top of the steps would get a little bit more light. Um, well, N2 was the first one I grabbed, so it'll be N2, N4, um, and just a little quick sweep of that. So there we go. So they're not still white, but I'm actually seeing a little bit just under the eave of that roof line. I kind of missed and it's just standing out so light. So I'm going to come in with V22 to knock that back, back there. Okay, so now let's start building up the uh, dirt path. And so that where that grass, the edge of grass, that's going to drop a little shadow. So I'm going to pull, put my darker colors over here. Kind of like we did with that door it's the same principle there and then just in general it's going to be darker as it gets closer to us and it'll actually we'll be continuing it probably in the next video um as we do the foreground but i'll stop right here for now for this video and we'll just do this little bit of path 
I will hit this real lightly using just the tip of that uh, nib just so I get a really fine line there. I'm going to come in with an E44. Always great for adding a little bit more gray tone and shading. Any kind of dirt combination. I will not hit that back because I want that to be nice and light since it's so far in the distance. We wouldn't see the darker shading on it. A little bit of E43. Back to the 34. Now I'm kind of using more the side of that marker. A little hit of it there. And the E31 we started with. Now we've got a nice depth of color. It's not just that flat E31 that I started with. And that's why you, you know, with the rest of the scene having so much dimension, you don't want to be chintzy with that, you know, uh, shading on simple things, even like your dirt paths, you know, because you don't want them to stand out at the end as not being as fully developed as the rest of your scene. All right, so I want to do, you know, we've got this grass growing up in front of our um, wall there. I'm going to do something similar, just you know, not, it won't grow as tall, but I want to get a little bit of a grassy look there at the edge of our path. And I think I'll come in um, with G24. It's a little bit darker than the 43 that we used and it you know I've it's the reason why I did the path first before doing this is it gave that background time to dry because if I did it while this was still wet my little um, grass brush strokes would just kind of want to bleed in and I don't want them to bleed in I want them to be uh, nice and crisp just like so and then, yeah, they just kind of taper out as we go further away. So just this little area here, I'm just hinting at the little grass growing right in there. Okay. <sighs> I'm almost, I'm going to let it dry so I get a truer sense. Um, but it almost I think I need something with a little bit more gray to it but we'll see we'll see um, I'll go in and we'll do a little um, tree line back there at the horizon line um, I'm going to add it in using oh uh, let's go 23 BV 23 And we're just going to hint at, you know, some trees growing back here. It's a little easy, quick trick that I just like. So it um, brings a little bit more life to the scene. It doesn't have the world kind of falling off the edge again, you know, at that horizon line that you create. It just adds a little bit of interest going on. So you just, you know, kind of squirrel in these little cloud-like bubbly shapes along that top of your hillside and you know let them go small tall and kind of vary in size Big 
here. small again. And you can see a little bit poking up behind her hat here. Wherever you want. It's your world you're building. And we'll even see some back here. Now, of course, those need a little bit of shading, too. So I'm going to come in with some BV25 for that. And it's going to fall opposite our light source. So we've established that that's coming in from the left. So on the right-hand side of all our little bushes, just like on our tree, we're going to be using the tip of the marker to squirrel in those little curly Q brush strokes. Going along the base because you know the whatever that growth of these trees slash bushes whatever you want them to be is going to cast a lot more shadow on the lower side ends uh, you know the undersides of the bushes or treetops so you're gonna be pretty generous with your darker shading color down there beauty of this is too it's like you don't have to be able to draw a tree all you have to be able to do is scribble to get this look so anybody can do it you just it's creating that impression of wild growth out there without having to do you know really fancy things okay and I will go back now and on our hillside, we used like V20, um, but I want a little darker than V20. Let's see. Maybe a V93. Let's try V93. We'll bring in a whole new, because I want to create some little shadows under our bushes that our bushes are cast or our treetops are casting. So just, you know, under your little squiggly, you're doing more squiggly, just, you know, that's really going to help ground them and look like that those last, the last bit of light in the sky is just throwing little shadows away from those bushes. It's just a little touch, but it's effective. And yeah, I want those to be a little bit grayer. So our little grass. Um, so I think I'm going to jump to maybe YG63. And try that. Yeah, that's better. There, much happier with that. Okay. Little things, but God do what makes you happy. <laughs> All right. So there we have it. We created a wonderful, idyllic little pastoral scene um, for our witch uh, to uh, call her home. And we will be continuing on with it in next week's video when we do the foreground here. So until then, stay crafty, my friends. Bye.